Welcome once again to In The Workshop, and now for something completely different, a Southworth Engines 12-inch vertical boiler feed pump. I went to see my friend Don Inglis the other day, and I saw this engine languishing in a corner, and so a price was agreed and I bought it. I don't intend to do a video series about this engine because I've really covered steam pumps, I think, in the last one. So I'm not going to mess about. I've lit the boiler to raise steam. I'm going to see whether it works without any intervention from me. While I'm waiting for the boiler to raise the steam that I need, I'm just giving it a run on some compressed air. And by the sound of it, there's a leak somewhere, I can hear that, and one of the water valves is stuck. But in no time at all, the water valve freed off. It was just obviously stuck on the seat. This one doesn't have a cap for the lubricator. It's the same kind of lubricator as on the horizontal version of this pump that Don made. So I think I'm going to make a cap for it and do a video about that at some stage. And while the boiler's still raising steam, it's a good idea to check your nuts. These were a bit slack, so I tightened them up with a socket. It's steam time. The superb Castle Steam Boiler raises steam in no time at all. So I've just opened the valve and I'm going to see what happens. The first thing that is apparent is that I think the gland on the piston may need adjusting because quite a lot of oil and water is running out of there. And the pump is stuck at one end of the travel. Hmm, just like the other pump did. Well, it's not doing much. There's quite a lot of water dribbling out of the gland, but that's about all. This is not a new engine. The horizontal version was much newer than this one. And it's done quite a bit of running on compressed air, but not on steam. I'm putting a piece of cloth on the bench just to soak up the condensate because there's a lot of it. Before I started running this engine, I was curious to see what the valve arrangement was because the top fitting is different. So I took the cover off and I noticed that the shuttle piston is running in a sleeved cylinder. And I think this is how it's shown on the drawing, but it's still not working. So I've pushed the piston to the bottom of the stroke and I'm going to turn on the steam valve again. And suddenly, to my complete and utter surprise, it works. As you can clearly see, there's a lot of steam coming from the bottom gland on the steam cylinder. That's an easy fix. What I'm currently doing is closing the water valve a bit. This will simulate the engine pumping against pressure. And you can clearly see the jet of steam now issuing forth from the gland. I like working with steam engines, they're just so incredibly steamy. And once again, for the umpteenth time, the only spanner that I can get to fit the gland nut is one of these cheap spanners from the spanner sets from Blackgate's Engineering. This engine differs from the other one. For instance, the exhaust flange, it's threaded so I've just temporarily screwed in a 3 8 by 32 union. I'll make a proper flange for it, just like I did for the horizontal version. I think it's time to test the engine at a higher steam pressure. Note to self, it's not a good idea to turn up the steam pressure when the steam connection is just a piece of silicone rubber tubing pushed onto the threaded end of the tap. I've turned off the gas so you can hear the engine without the roar of the burner. and the pump stops as the pressure falls below 10 pounds per square inch. I went round the engine and tightened up all of the small bolts around the flanges. And I wondered what this silver soldered part on the cylinder cover was. I think it's probably a mistake. I'm going to have a look. The bolts all came out quite easily. None of them were sheared off. I would expect nothing less from Don English. Ah, see what the silver soldered part is now. It's covering the steam inlet. It's very easy when making a cylinder cover to just drill the holes all the way around the edge using a rotary table. I'm quite happy about this, it's not bothering me, but I think as an exercise that I can video to show beginners how to do it, I'm going to make a new cylinder cover. So today I think I'll take a trip to Blackgate's Engineering and buy a new cylinder cover 
machine it and then copy the position of the holes, apart from the one that's in the wrong place, onto the new casting after I've machined it. There are one or two different ways to do this and I'll show both of them. One is the engineer's way and one is the musician's way. As I said earlier, there isn't going to be a series about this pump. I may fit some drain cocks to the pump because really when it first started off there was far too much water going everywhere. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.